Hi, my name is Chris Croft and I'm teaching trainers how to be successful trainers. And I want to talk about tenders today. The whole tendering process of bidding for work. Sometimes you get really big, juicy training contracts which are put out to tender. And the question is, is it worth applying for tenders? And I would say generally not. I have applied for some tenders and I have won some tenders in the past, but I don't think it's worth a hassle. And I would generally advise against it. And here is why. I think there are three big problems. The first one is the time it takes. It's really time consuming writing tender documents because you have to fill in their particular form. And often the form you have to fill in can be huge. And sometimes there are two stages. There's the application to start with, and then you fill in the full tender. Sometimes you have to go and then present. And it's a lot of work. It could be two or three days of work. And really, you need to include that in your price. You need to add a few thousand pounds on to cover the amount of work that you've spent doing it. And that might price you out. Although, of course, it's possible that everybody's putting a few thousand pounds on because of the process. And then the customer is just paying extra because of their stupid process. But that is a real issue. And you should really cost in your time. And the chances are there's going to be some idiot who's desperate for the work who's going to put a really cheap price in. So the amount of time involved is a real problem. And I'd much rather spend my time on something more useful, like selling, like contacting other customers saying, would you be interested in this? So could you use your time better than writing out a boring tender document? And that takes me to my second point, which is that it's unpleasant. The whole process of tendering is just horrible. It's just demeaning. You have to fill in boring forms. You have to go and do a talk to some people who sit there with their arms folded, assessing you, sort of this panel of hostile people. And it's just uncivilized and unpleasant. And I would much rather do training for customers who I already know, who already like me. They've become friends. I understand their organization. I feel I'm genuinely helping them, not just I'm ticking a box and I'm the cheapest. So it's a horrible process. And do you really want to spend your life doing that? So if you can possibly avoid it, I would. But my biggest objection to the tendering process is that it's unfair. So if we had to put all this time and unpleasantness into a process that did actually choose the best person, then, OK, I suppose I'd be up for that. If I genuinely believe I'm the best person for the job, I would go through that. But what I don't like is that it's not a level playing field. Often they've already chosen who they're going to have or they give the job to the person who's got the glossiest presentation. Uh, and I just don't think that's a good way to choose a trainer. What I think they should do is just get each person in for 10 minutes and say, go on, teach me about project management for 10 minutes and we'll have a look at who we like. But they don't do that. They ask you about your environmental policy and they want to see your bank balance for the last two years and all these things that are just not really relevant to whether you're a good trainer or not. So I don't even believe they're going to get the best outcome for that, especially if you're a, a one person band and you're competing against big training companies. It just doesn't feel like a level playing field to me. So personally, I think tendering is really expensive. They end up with um, people who have all loaded up the price by a few thousand. The really good trainers are busy and are not interested anyway. So they're choosing between the people who are less good they're paying more for it and they don't even really get to find out who's any good from doing that process. You know, having to fill in a form about why your course is better doesn't really tell the customer which course is best. So I just think it's an unfair process and not worth bothering with. Now, the only exception is if you have got lots of time, if you're starting out as a trainer, then you, you might as well spend a day or two filling out a form that might lead you to work. If you've really got nothing better to use your time on, if you've got no training delivery to do and you haven't got any other selling leads to follow up, then you might as well fill in some tender documents. But most of us have always got a list of customers we can call. And I think you're better off contacting customers directly than you are going through the tendering process. So that's my feelings about tendering. I'm pretty negative about them, but I think you can see why. But the good news is you don't have to do tenders. I haven't filled out a tender now for 10 years, and I've been happily doing training courses every day.
So if you want to be a successful trainer, you don't have to get involved in tendering. And I think that's really good news. But anyway, if you want to know more about getting into training, contact me on the link below, SuccessfulTrainers.com, and maybe I can help you get to become a freelance trainer. It is the best job in the world. It's really fun. It's really easy. It's pretty well paid. Why would you not get into training? I love it. I'm so glad I've discovered it as a job. And who knows, it might be the perfect job for you. But if you want to find out, give me a call on the link below.